Now, let's take a close look at the process of making a specific forest product, Oriented Strand Board, also known as OSB. OSB is an engineered wood product made by compressing and gluing layers of wood strands into boards that can be used in construction. The strong design of OSB makes it suitable for load-bearing applications. Making OSB is a detailed process that involves several precise steps. First, harvested wood is brought by truck to the OSB mill. Logs enter the mill and are soaked in warm water for about six hours to thaw frozen wood, to remove dirt, and to soften wood for debarking. Wood is fed into a knife strander and shaved into strands. Strands are then dried and coated with wax and resin, which will be used to hold the strands together as a board. Strands are oriented on a conveyor belt and moved into a hot press. The press heats the strands to over 200 degrees Celsius and compresses them. Depending on the desired thickness of the board, it remains in the press for one and a half to four and a half minutes. Solid oriented strand board comes out the other side of the press. The products are examined and graded for quality. Boards are stamped according to grade. A lift truck moves the product to the appropriate location in the warehouse. Products await shipment to customers. This whole process takes approximately 11 hours. Making OSB requires many people with a variety of skills, including tradespeople, engineers, laborers, and operations managers. Listen as these professionals talk about their roles in OSB production. Um, my name is Darlene Schwinnart. I uh, work at uh, Warehouser OSB plant in Edson, Alberta. Um, I am a shift supervisor currently and I have been here for 22 years. Being a shift supervisor, I'm in charge of an operations crew and the operations crew actually manufacture the board. We uh, provide the product that the customer buys. Um, we lean on uh, the maintenance department to support us in that role uh, to keep things running correctly, but we also, uh, it, it's a factory where we take trees out of the bush and we make it into uh, sheathing and flooring that we build houses with. It's a 24-hour operation, so you kind of take over from the crew that comes in behind you or ahead of you and they kind of pass off the, the product, whatever we're making. So you check in and see what's being made and of course the crews are the ones that do it and I just check in with them. I give them the support, I help them with uh, their safety and their PPE and to help them map out what's going on in the day and what product we're making. And, um, and you just, you account for everything that you make and keep track of everything and um, I, I do a lot of socializing. I get to just go out and talk to people. And, uh, and I can help fix their problems if they need assistance with supplies or just a hand or, or some knowledge because I've been here a long time and there's some new people here that don't have the knowledge. I enjoy the people and the problem solving because there are problems that come up every day. And I, I like to deal with that. Like when I can tackle a problem and solve it, and then you, you're, you accomplish something. My name is Doug Stanger. I uh, work for Warehouser in Edson, Alberta. It's an OSB plant in the forest industry. I am currently the maintenance manager. My role in the organization as maintenance manager is uh, it, it's a long-term role. It's to, I'm looking into the future to make sure that the reliability of our assets are, are available when we need them uh, so we can supply uh, our customers the product they want when they want and, and a, a quality product as well. Um, the day-to-day -day functions uh, roll off of my role and, and they bounce down to the supervisor. And uh, so I look, I look at the future for maintenance in, in the plant and as well as in, in the future of maintenance for the organization and as a whole. I think the first and foremost part is you have to have people skills. You have to be willing to work with people and you have to have that, uh, that keen interest in developing people. Um, if, the best tool I have in my toolbox as a maintenance manager is the people that work for me. So if I don't have an interest in them to develop them, it looks bad on myself and, and I don't, you know, nobody wants to fail at what they're doing. So you have to want to develop people to become better than yourself. You want to work yourself out of a job as a maintenance manager and go on, leave a legacy and go on to the next. I think that's the most rewarding part.
is, is watching people grow in the, in, in the trades and, and throughout the industry and being part of the, the teaching aspect of the, I really enjoy that.